question regarding the region of convergence for the Z transforms. So specifically, we will be looking into some constraints on the region of convergence for various classes of signals. Previously, we have discussed ROC properties with regards to Laplace transform. So these can be easily translated to Z transform. But right now, from the Laplace domain, that is in S plane, we move to Z plane, which has a region of convergence in terms of a circle. So in total, we have nine properties. Property number one. So this states that the region of convergence of X of Z, that is a transform of X of N in the time domain. So consists of a ring in the Z plane. So we can observe that we have one circular ring uh, depicted in the ROC for Z plane. This is our Z plane. And this is centered at the origin. So it is equidistant. So moreover, the second property states that the ROC, say our ROC is outside this circle. So we would not have any pole over here. That is, we do not have any pole in ROC. Now for the third property, it states that if X of N is of finite duration, then the region of convergence is the entire Z plane. And then there are some constraints. So except possibly Z is equal to zero and Z is equal to infinity. So let us look into one example. So say we have an X of N, which is equivalent to five, three, minus two, zero, four, and three. And we're saying, the time index 0 is at minus 2 value that is this is our n equal to 0. So from this you can observe that this is a finite signal. So it starts at n equal to minus 2 and then it terminates at n equal to 3. So we have a finite signal. And we are interested in observing the region of convergence for this signal. So if we take the z transform of this signal for that we can say x of z is simply a summation x of n that is the time domain signal multiplied by z power minus n and the summation is from minus infinity to infinity so basically we have a summation of x of n multiplied by z minus n so this value of n is minus 2 so we have x of minus 2 then z of z of minus n so this is simply minus minus 2 which becomes z of 2 and then we have a summation from here so we have a plus x of minus 1 z of 1 plus x of 0 z of 0 plus for this value this is now x of 1 but now z would be having a power of minus 1 and so on now plugging in the values of x of minus 2 over here, so this becomes 5z2 plus 3z1 minus 2 from here. So this will become 0, so this whole thing is basically cancelled off. And then we would be left with plus 4z minus 2 plus 3z minus 3. So this is our z transform but we have not reflected on the roc of this signal so what is the region of convergence for this signal or in other words when would this x of z converge so when will it converge and when would it diverge for the regions it is diverging that would not be included in the region of convergence and for the region when it is convert that would be included in the region of convergence so say if we set z equal to 0 as mentioned the first case so if we set z is equal to 0 so in that case these two terms will become zeros this would still be minus 2 
but these two terms would have a behavior like 4 times 1 by 0 plus so on so this term would become infinity and hence overall for z equal to 0 x of z would not converge so it's not possible when z is equal to 0 so z is equal to 0 is not in the ROC so similarly if we put z equal to infinity over here so in that case now these would become infinity and these would become zeros so again it is not converging so these are the two values for which it would not converge otherwise it would converge so hence for this signal we can say that the ROC is simply absolute value of Z so this should be greater than 0 and it should be less than infinity so for these two extremum points all other values are within the region of convergence now the fourth property states that if x of n is the right sided sequence and if the circle absolute value of z is equal to r naught so this is one specific region that we are basically nominating is in the roc then all finite values of z for which absolute value of z is greater than r naught will also be in the roc so to understand this let us look into the definition of z transform that is we have again a summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n z of minus n and then we can break this z into r minus n and e minus j omega n so as we would have a summation of x of n multiplied by 1 over r n times e minus j omega n and again the summation is from minus infinity to infinity so this part is basically the real part and this signal is assisting in the convergence and the property says that when you set r equal to r naught so this value of r is basically converging x of n so for example if this is our x of n expressed over here so and we multiply with a specific value of r which is r naught which is basically converging it's going down so if we multiply these two together so the resultant would be converging so next the property states that then for all finite values of z for which the value of z is now greater than r naught so this was r naught now if it is greater than r naught so it says that will also be in the roc so in fact they would not only be in the roc but they would be converging in a faster way for example as expressed over here now again we have the same x of n but now we are setting r1 of n that is so 1 over r1 now this is actually less than 1 over r0 that is we have a faster convergence and therefore if we multiply these two so the resultant signal would again be converging and that to even faster or in the z plane say this is our unit circle and we set an r0 over here so this value of r0 in time domain corresponds to this one so if we set another r1 so this was say r0 this is r1 which is further away from r0 so this value of r1 relates to this sequence in time domain and it is converging in a faster way so now for the left sided sequences so this becomes the fifth property now it states that if the circle absolute value of z equal to r naught is in the roc then all values of z for which z is between 0 and r naught will also be in the roc that is now for the circle now if this is the roc and previously we were here so this would also be in the roc and it would be converging in a faster way let us now look into the sixth property and this property states that if x of n is two-sided and if the circle absolute value of z is equal to r naught is in the roc then roc will consist of a ring 
in the z plane that includes the circle absolute value of z equal to or not so let us try to understand this statement with help of some examples so since x of n is said to be two-sided so this means that from zero onwards towards infinity so at discrete values we have some sort of a signal and at the same time we also have a signal from minus one minus two up to minus infinity so whatever the signal is we can break that signal into two parts say we make a chop over here we're going to consider this part as a right sided sequence and this part as a left sided sequence so let us say x of n has a right sided sequence which is simply 1 by 3 raised to power n u of n so this makes it a right sided sequence so u of n includes the value at 0 right so we're left with these values which are u of minus n minus 1 and let us say that these values are simply 1 by 2 raised to power n and also we have a minus sign over here now by adding a left sided sequence with a right sided sequence we have two sided sequence now and we are interested in taking the z transform of this so we would have x of z we have already derived a sequence of this form in the previous video we may also use uh, the table that is we can use pair number six and from there we have simply z over z minus 1 by 2 and this is valid when our absolute value of z is less than 1 by 2 similarly this is pair number 5 its transform is again z over z minus 1 by 3 we are now this transform is valid for an ROC which is greater than 1 by 3 so you can observe that for this part in the z plane if this is our unit circle so we have a value at 1 by 2 and ROC is inside it similarly for this part we have a pole at 1 by 3 and the ROC is out of that now from this equality we can combine the algebraic expression so we would have simply 2z z minus 5 by 12 over z minus 1 by 2 and z minus 1 by 3 now regarding the ROC so this ROC would be bounded by poles so hence again we have a unit circle which has a 0 at the origin and a 0 at 5 by 12 somewhere over here but it has one pole at 1 by 3 so it is somewhere over here this is our 1 by 3 and at the same time it has a pole at 1 by 2 which is over here so this is 1 by 2 so the ROC would be within this So this circular strip is our ROC. So this means that our ROC is that is absolute value of Z is greater than 1 by 3 but it is less than 1 by 2. Now again consider a similar example. Say we have X of N which has a left sided sequence and a right sided sequence. But right now we change these coefficients in the two. So say we have minus 1 by 3 and u of minus n minus 1 plus now over here we would have 1 by 2 and u of n now if we take the z transform of this so it would be very similar to this so we would have z over z minus from 1 by 2 now this would be from here 1 by 3 and we are saying that this is valid when our z is over here it was less than 1 by 2 so we are saying it is less than 1 by 3 plus the second part from here which is z over z minus 1 by 2 and its roc that is absolute value of z 
so this is actually greater than 1 by 2 so hence right now again we have two z planes with our unit circle the location of first pole is at 1 by 3 and the location of second pole is at 1 by 2 now this for the first case the ROC is less than that that is we are within this circle but at the same time for the right sided sequence we are out of 1 by 2 now if we were to combine these two together like we did before over here so in that case the first pole is at 1 by 2 and the second pole is at 1 by 3 and hence the or the respective ROC for this one is inward and for this one is outward and as there is no overlap as we had in this case and so if for double sided sequence for the right and left sided sequence if we do not have an overlap region then x of z does not exist that is the z transform does not exist so in short for two sided sequences ROC must overlap and also it should not contain any pole now the remaining three properties that is property number seven eight and nine can be inferred from the first six properties and it is easy to understand them from their definition as well so property 7 states that if the z transform x of z of x of n is rational then its ROC is bounded by pole or extends to infinity that is if x of z is having a numerator by denominator form in polynomial n of z by d of z so the ROC would be limited to this pole or if this pole is not there then it would reach infinity Similarly, property 8 states that if the z transform x of z of x of n is rational and if x of n is right sided, then ROC is the region in the z plane outside the outermost pole. So outside the circle of radius equal to the largest magnitude of the pole of x of z. So this we can say that we could have a number of poles. This is our unit circle. So we could have a conjugate pair over here. We may have a pole over here or over here. But if the outer pole is over here, then the ROC would start from here and go outward from the outermost pole. So another interpretation of it is that if X of N is causal, that is if it is a right sided and equal to 0 for N less than 0, that is it is causal, then the ROC includes Z equal to infinity. So this again is very obvious from the initial example that we took in property number 3. So for all of this, this was the Z transform. So if we include Z equal to infinity, so still it is converging. Hence the ROC includes Z equal to infinity. And a mirror image of 8 is property number 9. Uh, the Z transform X of Z of X of N is rational and if X of N is left sided, then the ROC is the region in the Z plane inside the innermost non-zero pole so previously it was outer but right now the innermost pole would dictate the ROC and this can also be seen from the example of property 3 that for left sided sequences which are anti-causal so the ROC includes Z equal to 0 in the next video we would look into some common Z transform pairs